morning we're going to skin and flush a wood duck with a different incision on the head. Most of my videos you'll see we remove the head completely cutting around the bill. This morning we're going to try something different. This is the way I learned taxidermy actually. We're going to make an incision on the throat that's going to need to be sewn up. It's just another way of doing a, doing a head on a bird. But we very carefully with a sharp scalpel we'll start about halfway back from the throat. Make about a two, two and a half inch incision. side cutters we're going to go in that incision we're going to sever the spine from the back of the skull we get some borax in there to soak up the blood we're getting quite a bit of blood on the feathers already and we're just going to work it inverting that skull all through that incision if it doesn't come then we may have to make the incision a little bit longer This is just another way if you don't like gluing the head back on of doing it. Okay, now we've got that. Neck loose from the back of the head. We're going to make our incision on the breast of the bird, starting with the breastbone. Very carefully, going down. Try not to cut through the guts. We're going to go down to about an inch short of the anus. Just going to proceed to skin this duck very carefully. Working our way to the legs first. Opening the complete decision up all the way from the breast down to the anus. We're just going to keep working towards, towards the outside of the bird, towards the Push that leg through. At that time, we can cut that leg off. Wood ducks are one of the most tender animals you're ever going to work on. Like bowing up, just turn that meat away so that's completely free from the body due to the tenderness of the wood duck I wait to clean the meat off the leg bone until I got it completely off the body unlike other birds where I've got some room and some I can use some pressure legs are loose we're gonna skin back and remove the tail I 
We get down where I can feel the tailbone right here. Right there is the tailbone. I'm just going to snip that loose. I'm going to use my fingers. I'm going to push this bird very carefully with my fingers down the back of the bird. If it doesn't want to push easy, use your scalpel. down the back, trying to get to where the wings attach to the body at this time. You know where they attach, right up in here. Just gotta feel your way through them. you pull on a wood duck skin they're very very fragile they'll rip very easy so the stuff you see on me moving off is just the extreme stuff that's loose the majority of a wood duck has to either be trimmed off with the scissors and I use a small three inch scissors when I'm trimming for taking off at the grinding wheel. As you'll see, I use just a normal grinder with a soft wheel on it, soft brush. You can buy their actual bird degreases out there, they're called. They're a real fine grinder. They're set up different. If you're going to do a lot of them, and you would rather do that than the big grinder, it's just another piece, another tool you need in your shop. I don't like any more tools than I need. Right now I'm just cleaning off the meat off the leg bone and off the legs.
the opposite leg, we got one done. Try and invert this leg over the leg joint so I can remove all them tendons all the way out of the joint. and then just pull it over the joint. You open your joint up like that. Trim the meat off. That way when you go to put your leg wire in later, it'll go right through that joint. If you don't get that tendon out, it'll be a harder work getting it through the joint. Legs out, now we're going to locate the tailbone. We're going to start skinning down the tailbone, removing these two glands on top of the tail. Two oil glands, they need to be removed out of the skin. Cut on each side of that tailbone and just it'll pop right out of there for you. Now we're going to trim the oil glands and the meat off of the feather quills, the tail quill. Using a knife in our fingers, we'll remove all that meat. Pull any tail feathers out, save them. When we're done drying it, we'll push them back into place and we'll just super glue them in. Now we're going to trim the meat off using our scissors around the anus very carefully. We don't want to cut the skin, we just want to get rid of the meat and the membranes. important to get rid of as much meat and fat off a bird as you can. I've been, I've seen animals where they've bled through the skin and actually discolored the feathers when they leave this fat and meat on them. I've smelled birds that have had too much meat left on them. It just, it's just an important part of a proper mound is getting the meat and fat off the skin. It's a hard part because you're going to make holes that you got to sew, you're going to do damage, but at least the meat won't dry and pull the feathers out of place and won't dry and get rotten. As you can see, I'm just trimming that meat off. I don't like to remove the meat with the grinder. It happens, it catches sometimes, it happens to tear. So I'm just removing the big pieces with the scissors. I got my finger underneath the skin. Uh oh, that wasn't good. See how tender they are? Fly. That was a little hole turned into a big hole really fast for me. Try very carefully not to make that any bigger and it'll sew back up. I don't know if there was a dog bite there to start that or, or if I did it. Now we're going to move up to the wings.
We're going to do two different type skin jobs on the wing today so you can learn two different techniques. They both work. One's a little harder when the skinning process is, but it's easier in the mounting process, and I believe it's a better mounting process. The other one makes the skinning easier, just makes your mounting a little more difficult. I've done them both ways. Right now we're just working the skin down from the bone joint where it was connected to the body to the first joint on this one. We're going right over the top of that first joint. Now this, this one we're going to remove it from that whole second set of bones. There's two bones in here. We're going to separate this just by taking the back of our knife and working down and pushing the quills off the back of that bone. We're just separating them from the bone all the way to that third joint. We've got joint at the body, we've got the second joint. Right here is our third joint. We're going to skin that all the way down to that third joint and open it up. At this time we're going to proceed to remove all that meat and tendons from these bones. We're also going to remove this ball where it was connected to the body. We're going to find the flat spot. We're just going to take our side cutter. We're going to make a little nick in there. We're going to take that whole ball right off that joint. We don't want that on there for mounting purposes. Because we'll mount to the outside of the body instead of going down into the joint area. Find if you keep your hands dry with borax, pulling this meat, moving this meat around, it'll make this whole job of cleaning these bones up a lot easier. Like I said, I just built myself a door that slides right in underneath my workbench. It's always handy. And when I'm skinning, I'm always using borax. Borax can be bought from any, it's powdered borax. I think most supply houses have it. Van Dyke's is where I get mine because it's the closest. Here's one wing bone completely cleaned off, ready to go. That's the first step. This is the harder one to mount by cleaning both this off and stripping these. The next one we're going to leave the feathers connected to the back of that second joint. As I said, it's going to make my job a little harder cleaning. But it's going to make my job of positioning the wings later easier. So. You're, it's up to you to figure out which one works the best for you. As I said, this is this website. Hopefully, we have a lot of different ideas and a lot of different ways of showing you stuff. You pick and choose, put together the scheme that works the best for you. To get it done the easiest and the fastest and the best. This time I'm down to the first joint. I'm going to clean this first bone off. I've only gone down to the joint. I haven't gone down the second one. Sometimes I end up going part way down the second one. We're going to snip that ball off again. Use our borax and our fingers and we'll clean that first bone up. Now we're working this very carefully 
down to the second joint on the bottom side. We're leaving the feathers attached on top. Once we get this joint here all opened up a little bit, we can go in and we can cut this meat away from that second joint. Cut the meat and the tendons. We're just going to start working that meat and the tendon down with our fingers. Pulling down very carefully so we don't tear this. As I said, you make the choice which of these two you like. This one's going to be harder skinning. It's harder to learn to skin. <coughs> but I may think it makes a more accurate mount later because those feathers all stay attached and they all stay in place where they're supposed to. I'll use my knife in between them bones. I'll just slowly put a little pressure down. Keep using my fingers. Keep pulling on them tendons and that meat. Working it down towards that joint. There, I just went over the joint right there. At this point, I've got those two my two types of wings. I got the first one here where it's all the way down. I got the second one. You can see where the feathers are still attached. These are your two bones. The feathers are still attached on the back side. I do the second one where the feathers are still attached. That's my preference. But it wasn't the way I learned. Right now we're just very carefully picking off some of the biggest pieces of fat. I think we're ready to go to the grinder this time. When using a bench grinder for degreasing birds, you use a fine wire wheel. The first time you ever use this wheel, you're going to put it on and you're going to mark the way of rotation. Rotation is always top towards you on a grinder. You're going to mark the rotation so you always do it the same. You're going to put that wheel on. Now this one we've used many times, but the reason you mark that wheel is you're going to temper this wheel with something, whether it be a steel rod or anything you can find you're going to temper this wheel the first time so it doesn't you take the sharp edges off by temper i mean you start your grinder and you use it and you run it like this what that does is that bends your your steel wheel in a certain direction and you always want that wheel going the same way because if you if you put that wheel on backwards, it'll dig right into your skin on your bird and it will tear it and it will tear it fast. So make sure your rotation on that wheel is always the same. <coughs> I keep my borax handy when I'm doing this. Make sure you got your goggles on. I like to put a apron on to keep as much of the fat and the gristle off myself. Make sure you have goggles on when you're doing this. Keep your hands dry with the borax. When you're running a grinder, you're always going to run with the feather quills. So you're always going to run from tail to head, tail to head. Always tail to head. Outside, but always be going forward. Work very lightly. I'm going to start right behind the wings and work everything down the neck first and then I'll come back and I'll start at the 
tail and I'll work the rest up towards the wing. But very carefully, get a feel for what your bird's going to be like and what your wheel's going to be like. I am very carefully, very lightly touching this skin. I've got some holes in this neck I gotta be very careful of. You'll start to see the feather quills in here. tedious, can be nerve-wracking when you first start in the business. After you learn, as soon as the faster you get over the nerves, the better the job you'll do and the less holes you'll make. The more nervous you are, the worse it is. I would collect up a bunch of birds. Upland game is easy to flesh, easy to skin, easy to flesh. Ducks are your hardest to learn. This is the pride. This is the reason some people don't do ducks. I know tax nervous don't do ducks because they don't like the greasy ducks and geese. If you can make a living without doing it, that's your choice. South Dakota, I have to do it all because ducks and geese can be an important part of the year for me. As you can see, I'm using this hand to hold. I, want, I don't want to let that skin get loose where the brush catches it. I want to keep it just, I don't pull it so I tear it, but I keep a little pressure on the skin at all times so that it stays tight. I'll do that by bending it, stretching it. I actually won't stretch it, I'll just pull it tight. a stool or something where you feel really comfortable setting up to the grinder. The more comfortable you are, the better job you'll be. You want your balance to feel good. happened been picked up by a dog and bit through on one of the most tender parts of the bird for degreasing. Not making this job any more fun than it ever was. 
Like I said, when I learned tax term, the guy teaching me this <coughs> told me what ducks is like working with wet toilet paper. Some days I believe him. Now we're going to start back at the tail area. The tail's really tender on these. Take me 20 minutes to fix the holes in this duct. As long as I don't make any great big tears. It's all, they're all easy repairs, they're just holes. But you gotta get that fat meat out of them quills, because if you don't, the duct wasn't worth doing in the first place then. That's just my opinion. that on the opposite side at this time we're done at the grinder we've got all the fat off you can see the feather quills you can see the holes I got to repair that's them are all dog bites there that's my hole now well, actually it may have been part of a dog bite that was a dog bite my holes are back here I made some good ones in the back we've got it to grease now we have to finish the head that we started earlier Proceed to bring that head out through our incision. Carefully 
skin the head forward. This one's really bloody, so it's hard to see where I'm at. Right now we're right at the eyes. We just cut through the ears. We gotta make sure we stay deep enough in those eyes so we don't cut the eyelid. Then we'll trim the eyelid off later with the scissors. The inner eyelid will leave the outer eyelid attached. Got the head completely turned. This time we're going to proceed to remove the eyes. Using our scissors, we'll use our scissors and we'll pull the eyeballs out. Be careful not to get them to explode. There's a little thin bone that connects to the corner of the mouth. I always cut that loose. Cut the back corner loose. Basically what you're doing is you're just cleaning all the meat and brains out of the skull. Try to leave the bottom jaw attached to the top to the top of the skull in the back corner here. I run 50-50. 50 percent of them will stay attached. <clears throat> Rest are going to break loose on me. This one's probably going to break loose because he was shot right here through the head. Looks like my whole skull is going to fall apart back here. Here again, you could have removed the head, done this separately, or you could have removed the head and put a artificial head and skull bill in it. It's your choice. What you want to do, it all works. <clears throat> Some of the best hacks terms in the country use artificial. I just prefer not to. I still like to keep the keep the bird as original as I can. Yep, see the skull was broke in the back. I'm cutting up in, removing the brain at this time. My bottom jaw actually came loose from my top jaw, from my top skull. As I said, that's 50% of the time that happens to me. It's better if it stays attached, but it's not a necessity. It's easier to clean up when it comes loose. using my fingers, pulling off all the meat, tendons, whatever's on this skull. I'm going to use a knife, scrape the skull. I want this skull fairly clean. I'll work borax into the brain cavity, get all the brains out. Big chunk of brain.
Alright, I believe the skull is clean. Now I'm going to clean the rest of the neck where we didn't reach from the bottom. We got to take it out through this part. We'll invert it up here a little bit. Most of this head area I'm going to do with my fingers. I might take it to the grinder for a little bit. But between the fingers and the scissors I'll get 75% of this off the head because I don't like taking my heads to the grinder. The guy that taught me to do tax term, he never took anything to the grinder. He did it all with the scissors. But I can sew my, he did because he didn't want to make any holes. I can sew my holes up 10 times faster than he could cut it all off with scissors, so. I've seen him take two to three hours to flesh a pheasant and the grinder takes about 10 minutes, so. Some of this will scrape off when we're washing it. Once it's wet, it'll clean up. Right now, I'm just kind of using my fingernail and just slightly scraping. Scraping the fat. I trim the inner eyelids off, so we got all we have left is the outer eyelids. I clean those up. Just getting all the fat. I'm not going to take this to the grinder at all. I can finish the little bit of stuff that's left on this head when I wash this bird. We're going to mount this bird right away today so it isn't going to go in the freezer. We're going to take it, we're going to wash it and cool. Since it's thawed out, we'll use cool Dawn dishwashing water and we'll clean the skin up.